inverse functions. So what inverse functions really are is, is two functions that, for lack of a better word, undo each other. Um, think of inverse operations, adding three, subtracting three, multiplying by two, dividing by two. Those operations are inverses of each other. So what would be the inverse of, let's just say, if I had the function square root of x? Well, what would undo the square root of x? Well, that would be x squared. They undo each other. Now, there is a way to verify inverses. And I'm going to use this works. So to verify two functions are inverses, that means they're going to undo each other. So the way we do that is we find f of g of x of f of x. When I do a composite function of those. So f of g of x. That means I'm going to take x squared and plug it in where x was in f. So f of g of x literally means I'm going to take g of x and plug it into f of x. So that'd be the square root of x squared. Well, what happens? They undo each other, and I just get x back. The other direction. If I take f of x, and plug it into g of x. So that would be the square root of x squared. I get x back. So if we find f of g of x and g of x and get only x back, are these inverses? I want to see if they're inverses. So again, all I have to do is substitute them into each other. So f of g of x, let's see if we can see this color. Ooh, it's pretty good. f of g of x means I'm going to take g of x and put it where x is. So f was the rule 3 times its input plus 2. And what I'm plugging in where x was is x minus 2 over 3. Well, the 3 on the outside and the 3 down here are going to cancel. That leaves me x minus 2 plus 2, which is an x. Yay! Let's check the other direction. In the other direction, I have g, which is something minus 2 over 3. So something minus 2 over 3. And what's going in place where x was is f of x, 3x plus 2. So I have 3x plus 2 minus 2. That leaves me 3x over 3, which simplifies to x. Two functions are inverses. Now what if I wanted to find an inverse? Well, to find an inverse, going to switch. Oh, I left off something. That should be I-N-V-E-R-S-E. -E. We're going to and Y. So f of X equals 7X minus 5. Well, I'm supposed to switch X and Y, but I don't see a Y. Oh, that's right. F of X is another name for Y. this now as y equals 7x 
minus 5. I do have an x and a y, and I'm allowed to switch them. So we're going to switch x and y. They're literally going to switch their locations. So the 7, the minus 5, the equal sign, everything else stays put. I'm just going to put the x where y was and the y where x was. Now we started off in function notation, and that's very important. If I'm in function notation, I want to stay in function notation. So the first step to do that is to solve for y. Get y by itself. So to solve for y, I would add the 5 over, so x plus 5 equals 7y, and then divide both sides by 7. So divide both sides by 7. I get x, and I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, x plus 5 over 7 equals y. Well, that is a correct answer. Answer, but it's not the best way to leave it. So when we have solved for y, we want to call this by its proper name. So there's a proper name for an inverse. The inverse of f of x is called little negative 1 of x. That means inverse. So I'm just going to, at the very last second, instead of y, I want everybody to know this is f of x's inverse. He's going to undo that function. We are going to call it by its proper name, inverse of f. So to get ready to switch x and y, I can call g of x y. And when I switch x and y, the cube is going to stay where it's at. So now it's x equals y cubed plus 1. So we switched. Now we're going to solve for y. Undo cubed. We're going to take the cube root. That's not his proper name. His proper name is the inverse of G. Do one more. Now when I write this, there's something I tend to write out to the side because I know there's something x can't be. So you'll see this on homeworks and stuff too, problems where if there's a fraction, you'll see out to the side x can't be whatever it can't be. x can't be 3 or I'm dividing by 3. So I want to state that at the very beginning. Now, before I can switch, I'm going to call this y, and now I'm going to switch x and y. So this would be x equals y plus 2 over y minus 3. Well, let's see. If I multiply both sides by y minus 3, that would get rid of that. So on the left side, I would have x times y minus 3x, and then I'd have y plus 2. Y is on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to get them all on the same side. So I'm going to move that y over, so it'd be xy minus y. And while I'm at it, I'll move the negative 3x over here. Now notice, 
both of these terms, I'm going to do it in a different color, there's a Y here and a Y here. I am going to factor out that Y. So I'm going to factor out the Y and what would be in the parentheses? So Y times X is XY and then this would need to be a negative 1. Well now to get Y by itself I would have to divide both sides by that parentheses. Y is going to be by itself. It'd be Y equals 3X plus 2 over X minus 1, but that's not his proper name. It's the inverse of H. as equations, but now let's talk a little bit about graphs. So graphs and inverses. It's the next part. So for a function to also have an inverse function. That just means that the inverse is also a function. A graph has both a vertical line test The horizontal line test. Now a function whose inverse is also a function is a very very special relationship. This relationship is called one to one. What that means is that every x has a y and every y is faithful to its x. They're both faithful. They're perfect perfect perfect. So let's just see if we can identify one-to-one -one functions, functions that have an inverse from their graph. They need to pass both the vertical line test and Which of these are one-to-one -one and which ones are not? Is this be a one-to-one? -one? Yes. No. And then yes. They okay, with graphs and inverses. Okay. Ask you to graph inverse of dot 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 so cool. I'm going to say we've got this function f of x that connects the points negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 4, 2. So we've got a function that connects these points together. This f of x. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 4, 2. Okay, so here we go. Now 
Now remember, when we had the equation, we found the inverse by switching x and y. Guess what? To find the inverse, we're going to switch x. So f inverse would have the points switch x and y. Negative 2, negative 3. 1, negative 1. And 2, 4. You literally are switching the x and y's. So negative 2, negative 3 is here. 1, negative 1 is here. And 2, 4 would be up there. Now what's interesting about these graphs is you get this kind of a mirror image. If I drew a diagonal in, it would split those right in half. An interesting tidbit. Let's try another one. Let's say this time my function is x squared minus 1 for x's that are greater than or equal to 0. What this is telling me is that this x is greater than or equal to 0. It just means, this means start the table at 0. Start at x equals 0. So if I'm making a table of x's and f of x, I'm only starting when x is 0 and going up from there. So 0 squared minus 1 would be negative 1. 1 squared minus 1 would be 0. 2 squared minus 1 be 3. 3 squared minus 1 is 8. 4 squared minus 1 is going to be way too big for me to graph. Okay. So here's my function. And what it really is, it's just half of a parabola. Um, I'll do this one in pink. Okay, so 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 3, 3 goes all the way to 8, and that's about all I can graph. And it would keep going and going and going and going. Now my inverse, I'm going to switch x and y. So my inverse function, we're going to switch them. So my table would be negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 8, 3, and so forth, 15, 4. So negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 8, 3, and I'm getting this kind of mirror image thing going on. If I drew a line down the middle, a diagonal, always happens with inverses. 